Welcome to our service today from the Ingleborough team of churches. It's lovely you could join us for worship. Today we mark Remembrance Sunday in this service and in services throughout our churches in the team. We remember, we reflect, we give thanks for the sacrifices made on our behalf by those who have served in conflicts past and in conflicts today. We pray for peace and pray for our service women and men. We commit ourselves to be peacemakers as God calls us to be. Later in our service, we join the community of Bentham for a two minute silence as they gathered on the 11th to remember and to reflect. As we begin this service, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, infinite in wisdom, love and power, have mercy on those for whom we pray. Through Jesus, who suffered for us on the cross and knew pain and tribulation. Amen. Let us turn to our first hymn. So we come together to remember. Some of us will remember particular 
individuals, a comrade, a friend, part of a family. And some will remember them very intimately. Some of us are here to remember people that are a name in our community or a name in our family that we never met. But nevertheless, we want to remember them. Some of us perhaps don't have anybody particularly that we are remembering today. But like the tomb of the unknown warrior, those we don't know have done as much as those we do. And so we're going to be still for a minute or two uh, just to prepare our thoughts so that when the whistle blows at 11 o'clock we will hold two minutes of silence to remember.
the Kalima at the Zah. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. The going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Like those now who have wreaths to lay, to lay the wreaths.
after the service in Bentham, I managed to catch up with one of our friends, the Reverend Stephen Caddy, from the Methodist churches in our area. Stephen has extensive experience as a padre, a chaplain in the armed forces, and so I caught up with him to ask him his thoughts on remembrance. Thank you for being with us on our service, Stephen. So what would you say remembrance means to you and to your churches? Thank you, Nick. Yes, remembrance is a time to look back and to reflect on the cost of war in times uh, past, but it's also a reminder that we still all live in a dangerous world. And there is conflict, of course, in the world in many places at this time, and our own uh, armed service personnel some of them will find themselves in places of conflict. Potentially, they all know that something uh, terrible can happen again. For me, personally, I remember <laughs> the conflict in Afghanistan. Twice I was called upon to assist with the funerals of men who had been killed there. And so uh, their names and, and their stories make it a very personal event for me. For our churches, it's an opportunity to reflect on Jesus as the Prince of Peace, a man who suffered violence, but who responded um, confidently uh, with, with peace and with love, and who we believe lives forevermore. So he remains our example, and following the example of Jesus, we seek to have compassion on everyone need. Of course, in the services, that's the role of the chaplains too, not to uh, honour or glorify war, but to be alongside those uh, people who are in extreme uh, situations of need, and to show that uh, representatives of the church are wherever there are people in need, just as Jesus Christ came to be with all of us in our need. Thank you, Stephen. This morning's reading is taken from Mark 13. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what a magnificent building. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus. Not one stone will be left here on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and he will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines, and these are the beginning of birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As we lift our prayers to God this morning, we hold before him not only those from our own nation, but all those across the world who suffer as a result of conflict. And we pray for peace and reconciliation between peoples. Let us pray for all those who suffer as a result of war and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. We pray for those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May they know your comfort and may God give peace. We pray for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering their family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. We pray for civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity and the ways in which we have failed to work for love, tolerance and justice. May God give peace. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. We pray that you will bless them and that you will multiply their work. May God give peace. We pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. We pray that swords may become plowshares and spears pruning hooks. May God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memories we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, May we put the faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. As we heard in the reading earlier in our service, our wars are part of the life of this world, sadly, we wish that they weren't, but unfortunately they are. And they are not a surprise to God. We bring all the suffering of the world before God in prayer, knowing that he hears the cries of the most needy. And we commit ourselves to be peacemakers. We may be able to only do small things, but we do what we can to work for peace and we seek to entrust ourselves into God's care, looking for the coming of his kingdom. For when Jesus talks about birth pains, he is talking about an expectation, an expectation of an age of joy to come. And that is where we place our faith, as well as committing ourselves to be people of prayer, people of peace, and people of action towards peace. And so let us now commit ourselves into a cause of peace, in an act of resolve. It is our resolve to be peacemakers and seek, 
through prayer and political influence, to support those working for an end to war. Lord, help us. It is our resolve to practice tolerance and seek to live as good neighbours with those of other faiths or races. Lord, help us. It is our resolve to promote social justice and economic advancement by the practice of our Christian faith. Lord, help us. Let us pledge ourselves anew to live by the teachings of Jesus through trust in the Father's love and to so promote our Christian faith that the world might be changed into the likeness of his kingdom. We will help, encourage and comfort others. We will support those working for the relief of the needy. We will live by and promote our faith. We will work for the peace of the nations. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this service. Services are going on in our churches as we pray for peace and for those who serve and as we reflect and remember together. Please do stay safe 
and stay in touch. But let me close this service with a prayer of blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.